Welcome to the Guild Family Stream. Brethren in Christ, Laudato Jesus Christus in Secula. This is Timothy Flanders with the Community of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to the Guild Family Stream. Today we're going to talk about the SSPX Syllogism, written by our Guild member and leader of the Apostolate, Jacob Bauer. And we're going to discuss some of your questions. Uh, you've submitted all sorts of fun stuff to get over. Uh, we haven't done this in a while, so we're, I'm going to try to do a very long stream just so that we can get all the questions. Might need to have an intermission, but uh, hopefully we can get through everything. So um, today, uh, let's see. Here's what we got. Here's what we got on the schedule. Um, the SSPX syllogism, syllogism will be coming soon. Oh, I didn't. Let me uh, minimize this. Let's see here. Okay. So. Here is our schedule today. There's a few things of note that I wanted to go over before we get into the SSPX syllogism. Also, there's some interesting questions from guild members. Uh, talk about Holy Week. Talk about some resources that we have. I wanted to break down the ordered love of Catholic identity. This is a very important concept that I think is fundamental to our apostolate here at Meaning of Catholic and also fundamental to addressing very all the different controversies that we deal with and then i wanted to quickly touch on trad neo jansenism this is something that i've discussed and uh i i tried to define it previously and in this this segment we'll talk about three points of what i would consider to be trad neo jansenism and how they're answered uh we'll touch on kennedy hall's new book sspx the defense um jacob bauer is going to give us this sspx syllogism jacob bauer is right here what's up jacob and some of y'all's questions, we're going to get into those things. As always, you can get the whole stream if you go to meaningofcatholic.com slash register. This apostolate is supported by a guild. The guild supports the apostolate. It provides income for the Flanders family, allows us to pay also our writers and publish books. And the guild also, we support each other. We are working to provide for needs of the guild members. And the primary requirement to be a guild member is to invoke our patrons every day for the intentions of the apostolate and the needs of the guild members. Our patrons are Our Lady of Victory, Mary, Queen of the Home, St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, and St. Anthony of Desert. Three lay people who provide our model to be lay men and lay women in our time as a lay apostolate. And the second requirement is to contribute financially because we've got bills to pay and mouths to feed. So, meaningofcatholic.com slash register to become a guild member. So, let's talk about Holy Week resources. If you ser just search Holy Week resources, meaningofcatholic.com, you'll get this site that I created, which has all the resources that if you don't have a pre-55 Holy Week, and I'm not going to get into the controversy of that, but if you want that, um, one of the things about, I mean, one of the most important things about the, the, the Holy Week debate is that there's all these customs and devotions that were lost because they changed the times of Holy Week. Now, if you're attached to going to the Holy Thursday evening, that's great. Go for it. Um, but if you want to recover uh, some of these traditions and devotions of our forefathers, then the pre-55 ancient Holy Week of our forefathers is the way to go. And uh, one of the most cherished devotions is the Tenebrae. The Tenebrae service happens beginning on Spy Wednesday night, which is it's the matin service. So it's the morning service that you do starting Wednesday night. And that's a, a beloved service. Um, there's also, if, if you scroll down here, there is resources to make use of the um, devotions, there's Holy Week customs for the whole family, quarantine edition. That was back when uh, COVID-1984 uh, was upon us. Um, so we have devotions through the Triduum. Uh, one of the big devotions on Good Friday uh, in the pre-55 world was the seven last words of Christ. Um, the 40 hours devotion, the seven mysteries of the precious blood, the holy hour, 
Uh, we have mental prayer resources. And then we have all the different details of the ancient Holy Rite, Holy Week uh, controversy. So for me, myself, I do not have access to a, a Holy Week. So I'm going to be reading from my Father Lassant's Missal in the morning, reading through the services, trying to do finish the, bi the annual Bible reader that we have, and then working on some of these devotions during Holy Week. And uh, one of our questions for uh, from the guild focused on um, the how do we raise our children in a time like this? And I think a, a huge thing is developing customs in the domestic church, developing customs in the domestic church uh, and kind of seeing what sticks. What, what are your you try something this Holy Week? Do your children ask for it the next Holy Week? And let's see if I can un... I just lost my... Oh, here's my mouse. Okay. My mouse was uh, gone for a minute. So one one thing you can do is you try to do some custom as a family. Like this Lent, for, we've been doing... Um, we, we For the first time, we did the beans, where every time my kids get good behavior, they get beans just like lima beans for Lent. And then these turn into jelly beans for Easter. So my, my children are very small. So, uh, and we'll just see if they want to do it next year, if they remember it or if we want to do it next year. So it's, it's trying to inculcate uh, these traditions. So one, one tradition we started last week or last year, sorry, was taking the Palm Sunday. Uh, so tomorrow we'll get Palm Sunday, bless palms, which are sacramentals against the demons, especially in the ancient pre-55, right? And uh, so you take these and you save them. And then at the rogation tide. So here's an example of something where, um, you know, this is this. You may not have the rogation masses, but you can still do this custom, which we, we started last year. And we're going to do it again this year is you, you save those palm friends from palm, palm, uh, palm branches from Palm Sunday. And then what you do is you process with your children around the four corners of your property and you bury the sacramentals, uh, these palm branches on the four corners of your property. And so we just picked it. And then we and then you uh, you plant seeds as well, because rogation days are all about planting seeds and blessing the harvest harvest. So um, my my kids really love doing a procession. I gave I gave my my four year old a, a, a little crucifix that he he held up and everybody had something to carry and then we sang um praise the lord the all uh god the almighty um so things like that and um you can read the forgotten customs series at one peter five we're also i'm hoping to launch a forgotten or new customs of the domestic church series as well so it'd be kind of a parallel to matthew pleasy's series and um so Part of it is recovering these things, like on this these these Holy Week resources, recovering these things that have been lost. But part of it is we have to just create new things sometimes. Some things that, uh, because of our modern context, things are different. We just have to create something new in your family and just see what sticks. So I, I think that that's one of the most important things is um, the importance of customs. Your, your children look forward to Christmas every year. Why? Because of the customs of Christmas. So it's all about just creating fun customs with your little kids. And this is something that kids before the age of reason, they latch on to. So that's, I think, in my opinion, one of the most important things is customs. Besides all the basics, which is obviously loving your children, teaching them the faith, all those good things. You know, even if you're, you don't even have a Latin mass at all, you can still inculcate a very pious and traditional domestic church. So let's continue with this aspect. Now, the ordered love of Catholic identity. What do I mean by this? What I mean is we as Catholics, the, uh, oh, you know what? I think I forgot the one book I was going to read from. Okay. So hold on a minute. I'll be right back. I forgot. A, I forgot a book. Let's see. Stop cam. Oh, I'm on one Peter five. Let's try this. Okay. Be right back. <clears throat>
<clears throat> okay, so I wanted to read from a text to introduce this this concept. I want to read it from this this text I've been reading as a comfort for myself in difficult times, um, which is a book called, in German, Mein Kampf gegen Hitler. So obviously Hitler wrote uh, Mein Kampf, but uh, it, uh, um, Dietrich von Hildebrand, who was his greatest enemy ideologically, um, in his memoirs, he, he wrote a title for part of his memoirs as Mein Kampf gegen Hitler. So it's a, this mockery of Hitler. Um, so in this book, he describes an interaction that he had shortly after the First World War. And it was the bitterness of the First World War that really caused the Second World War. And I think this is a very, very instructive for us in our time. And I'll explain why. Um, so what happens is the the German, Dietrich von Hildebrand, is invited to this peace conference, the, this conference that's promoting peace shortly after World War I. So this is in 1920-something, early 1920s. And he's the one of the only Germans, and the Germans were hated after World War I. They were blamed for World War I. So he came to this, this peace conference in Paris, and um, suddenly there was an uproar where the French people were blaming the Germans for the war. And they they confronted Dietrich von Hildebrand and said, you will not even admit that the Germans caused the war. And Dietrich von Hildebrand's response was was uh, classic. He said, I cannot. And, you know, he's this huge public figure. So this is there's huge po political ramifications for what's going on here. And he says, I cannot I cannot say if the Germans were at fault for the war because I don't have access to all the secret archives. But then they pressed him and said, well, what about the invasion of Belgium? <clears throat> and here's the story. Thereupon a man arose and said, very well, then I will put another question to you. Your answer will clearly demonstrate whether you are honest. If you say that you are not a nationalist, then what do you think of the German invasion of Belgium? Now, an important historical lesson here is that the Germans invaded Belgium during World War I, which was breaking a treaty that was almost 100 years old, which had been signed in the name of the Holy Trinity. And so that was one of the, the big shockers that, that turned people against Germany. I, uh, this so this is von Hildebrand's talking, I stood up again and said, that was an atrocious crime. Thunderous applause greeted my words. I continued, I have no problem in admitting that it was a dreadful crime, for I am first a Catholic, then a Catholic, and yet again a Catholic, and so on and on. Again, thunderous applause. So at a time when there's these extremely bitter nationalistic rivalries, which had literally caused the death of millions just a few years earlier, there is this immense bitterness between these two countries and Dietrich von Hildebrand keeps, he keeps his loyalty the, to Germany and says that I can't say I, I I'm willing to admit my country was wrong if it was really wrong. But then at, at in a particular moment, he says, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Catholic, which is a reference to the treaty between Germany and Belgium in the name of the father, son, and Holy spirit. So, what, what should, this should teach us the fact that our, our loyalty to being Catholic as the identifier that is most important should be the most important thing. And this is what I mean by the ordered love of Catholic identity. So what I've put on the screen here is the first three aspects of my identity and should be for many of you as laymen is that we are Catholic spouses and lay men or lay women. And that should be number one in our mind. The reason why I'm emphasizing this is because many people today say that I'm a this party or I'm a that party or I'm a this party or that party. And they put that party within Catholicism as actually a bigger and more important thing than the Catholic identifier. And what's most What's most acute about this is that 
we are all in communion with one another. If we, if we commune at the table of the blessed sacrament, if we commune at the altar, we are in communion with one another. We are in communion with Christ and his church. We're in communion with one another. And so our identity, the, our loyalties must do, be to being Catholic. So after the first three, I've put, I've put a, a number of other loyalties and identities that would identify me. And all of these are more important to me than being trad. Trad is number nine on the list. Um, and that's because being trad is a very recent controversy, extremely recent relative to the history of the church. It's just extremely, extremely recent. And so as trads or whether you're trad or not trad, or you're a critic of the trads or wherever you kind of stand on the spectrum here, because people that mean it of Catholic are kind of on all spectrums of that. That thing, wherever you kind of stand on that, needs to be subordinated to your identity as a Catholic. And then all of the other sort of identities as a Catholic, which are more important than that, because being a trad or kind of taking a stand on this, like as we're, we're going to talk about the SSPX in a minute, taking a stand on these things is much more uncertain. You know, I'm an Augustinian. I'm a Benedictine. These are the things that identify me in my spirituality, my thought process, those things are far more certain than trying to take a stand, take a stand on trad issues. So this is what I emphasize on this and that, I mean, we should be able to get along if we, if we have an ordered love. And this is for, I mean, from St. Augustine is that we have to have this ordered love. We have to order and prioritize our different loves. So that's my soapbox on that topic.